Hi friends, I'm Heidi Jo and this is my channel, Real Rainbow Food. I'm on Instagram and Facebook under the same name there. And I have a fun video for you guys today. It's um, a plant video. So um, I wanted to show you guys, um, this is the whole seed catalog by Baker Creek. Um, you can find their stuff at rareseeds.com. Um, I'm a big fan of their seed company and many of the varieties I bought at our far local farmer's market. There were quite a few. Um, I'm not sure if they got their seeds from Baker Creek, but there is info in the catalog about the certain varieties. And I'm going to try to read those to you guys. So um, we're going to start with, we got, oh no, <laughs> sorry guys. Okay. Um, we're going to start with cabbage. Um, we we got a lot of cabbage. Um, one of the reasons I'm buying plant starts still, <laughs> I might always buy a few plant starts each year just to get different varieties. We don't have any of these varieties growing. We did do some plant starts, but some of them haven't made it or there is damage because I was using a cold frame to um, try to keep them, some of them warm and some of them got burned. So anyhow, um, Local farmers market to the rescue. So we have here, um, first is a beautiful cabbage plant. It's so big. I love cabbage. We love, if you've seen my haul videos before, um, where I go shopping places, I often have cabbage in our hauls. And um, this variety is called, uh, I'm just gonna hold it up. And you guys can read this one cause I'm not gonna try to pronounce that name cause I'm not very good at <laughs> But I like it, Glory. So I'm going to read about this one. Um, actually, here, I'm going to hand this back to you. And I'll show a picture if I can. We'll see. I haven't done it this way before, so bear with me. Um, so they've had this one. It's down at the bottom here. And, I'm, oops, I'm sorry. I'm trying to, looks like a beautiful, beautiful cabbage. And what it says about it is it was introduced in 1899 um, by a couple people in Holland. It's a medium, large, hard, round heads, an, um, an early, excellent keeping variety that is good, a good producer and good for sauerkraut, you know, so that's awesome. I want to say um, we have done longer term um storage of cabbages and we haven't done it this way um except when we've got them at the store but um saran wrap really works well if you are storing cabbage we have found because the ones that we've bought from the store just even last like well if you buy more than a few you know um it's a really good I've heard other people talk about it too, that it's really good to make your cabbages last longer. Um, overall, when we did do some from the garden and stuff like that a few years ago, um, we just stored them without that. I didn't know that at the time, that saran wrap is really great for storing cabbages. And um, we would just tear the outer leaves off, feed them to some animals. And, and so that's you know, or you could compost them if you don't have any animals. Anyhow, I'm going to try to keep moving. Um, so we got some eggplants. I'm just going to show you one plant. We've got multiple plants of a lot of these. Um, because my, my like philosophy a little bit is like, I usually get at least a couple of plants of the same variety in case I lose one. Um, this is a early long purple eggplant. And then we got... Um, let's see, this one was called, I guess I should be, I don't know if I showed you, they look like an eggplant. <laughs> um, this one's called Midnight Moon. It's a hybrid. So, uh, Baker Creek definitely doesn't sell those. They sell the older, um, heirloom seeds, you know, um, but we're excited. We love, we love all sorts of plants. Um, okay. And so those were the eggplants we got. And then we got a lot of spicy peppers. Let's see what we're starting with. These are, some of these are in Baker Creek. I'll show you a plant, a pepper plant. And I'm just going to read about this one. I tried to bookmark the stuff in here. Um, I'll try to show you a picture. So this one's called Z Zapotec. 
jalapeno. Um, and oh, the lighting is so bad. I'm trying to see. Okay, so there's the pepper right there. And you can kind of see on there, there's like little, you know, fussy stuff or whatever you want to say. Like, it's like little lines. And that's kind of normal for that variety. Um, it's not bad or anything like that. It says it is a more flavorful gourmet jalapeno. This ancient heirloom sings with smoky, sweet flavor and heat. It's an ancient variety from Mexico. Uh, the, the plants get two to three feet tall and they're covered um, in one to two inch deep green pods that ripen to a carnival red color with tan crack lines considered hot for a jalapeno so you can bet that i'm not gonna eat those <laughs> i don't like a lot of spice anymore as i've gotten older but i have a lot of people that are in our home that like spice all right and then we're gonna go to uh let's see what we got here um lemon spice jalapeno and let's show you here i'm sorry this is kind of a little harder to do than i thought it would be it's a big catalog a fun catalog so they're there and it says a stunning burst of fruity flavor and vibrant color makes this a super exciting new hot pepper this colorful jalapeno was introduced by new mexico state university this variety has major eye appeal and stands out in salsas and other fresh um, preparations the color is stunning and really pops um, edible landscaping is a breeze with this, uh, with the lemon spice. The sturdy plants are covered in sunny color. Great for mixed bed or container planting. Yeah, peppers are great in containers too, you guys. So if you don't have a lot of space or, um, you know, you're even growing on a deck or something. And then we have here is orange spice, kind of like the lemon. So let's see what they say about that. It's so fun to try new varieties, and you can kind of see it's this one here. We also have a pumpkin. We didn't get that one today, but um, orange spice jalapeno, a colorful new heirloom introduced by New Mexico State University. The vibrant tangerine orange variety is extra tasty and makes an amazing salsa. I don't think I could do <laughs> I like it's so funny the way they worded that because it sounds like you're making salsa just out of jalapenos. That's definitely not for me, but some people might like that. Um, super ornamental and extremely prolific. These have a wonderful fruity citrus taste and are packed with nutrition and are only lightly spicy. So maybe I could handle it a little in salsa, definitely, if it wasn't just all jalapeno in there. Uh, gourmet treat that adds flavor to the jalapeno family. All right, keep moving along to the next one. All right, did I miss a page? Yes, I missed a page. It's back a ways, hold on. I think it was right here maybe, sorry. I bookmarked everything and somehow, okay, so this one looks a little smaller. It'll catch up, they usually do. It's Craig's Grande Jalapeno, it looks like it ends up being a fairly big one. Um, you know, it looks like a normal jalapeno there. Um, and then a delicious fat jalapeno that is perfect for making lots of salsa. Perfect for anyone who loves jalapenos. It has thick, flavorful, hot flesh developed at Redwood City Seeds. We love this one. And I believe that's in California, you guys. Um, and then... We've got a sugar rush peach jalapeno. Um, that one looks a little bit yellow. I'm not sure if a lot of times when plants are turning more yellow like that, they need fertilize. So we'll probably do something like that. Maybe a fish fertilizer to get them really doing well. Um, I think I took my bookmark out for that one. So I got to find it again, you guys. But that one's in Baker Creek as well. So I figured I'd read which ones they had. I thought it'd be kind of interesting. At least I find stuff like this interesting. <laughs> um, so this is one that is a pretty spicy one, I believe. It's really beautiful, but um, 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, amazing sugar, sweet flavor, and some fire to a uh, scrumptious snacking pepper sugar rush peach is by far the most fun pepper to eat. I don't know about that for me, but the long peach colored fruit is packed with loads of super sweet tropical flavor and the seeds bring a smoky complex heat that creates a wild flavor experience unparalleled in any pepper we have tried. This exciting new open pollinated variety was bred by hot pepper prodigy Chris Fowler of Wells. Um, Chris credits this amazing variety as a happy accident courtesy of adventurous pollinating insects buzzing between various varieties of a couple other peppers. I'm not going to pronounce them right, so I'm not going to say. Um, the result, super early high yields of this uh, exquisite uh, sweet hot peppers. So that's pretty cool. All right. And then we got a couple milder peppers. That's more up my alley. And we just got um, kind of a fun one here. It's called Mini Bell um, Pepper Mix. And they have all sorts of colors that come on the, on the plant. Uh, am I doing it <laughs> like right? So, all right. I think you guys can see that. Um, it says, I'm sure my kids are going to love this. My younger ones. Oh no, I'm losing more of my bookmarks. This colorful mix of dainty bell peppers is an old Ohio family heirloom. This trio of mini red, yellow, and chocolate bell peppers was introduced to the Seed Savers Exchange by member um, Lucina Cress. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. She received the seeds um, from an elderly neighbor woman and began to grow them out. The two-inch mini bell peppers became locally famous and she would sell hundreds of jars of cabbage stuffed pickled peppers at her local church bazaar each year. Oh, that sounds fun. We love these little peppers for snacking, stuffing, or pickling. Plants produce an abundant abundance of tiny colorful orbs, easy to grow and so rewarding. I don't think with my kids they will make it to like even cabbage stuff. That sounds really good though, unless they're really prolific. My kids love those snacking size peppers. <laughs> okay, and then what do we have next? The Italian, I think I lost, I'm trying to think if I lost, yeah, that's the bookmark I lost. Italian pepper, I'm not going to pronounce it correctly, so I'm just going to show you guys. So here is another pepper, and show you the picture and the name on that. It's, hold on, <laughs> sorry, this is harder than it looks. Okay, so it's right there, and... Um, it says a popular thin little pickling pepper. This heirloom comes from southern Italy. Um, the three to five inch fruit has a superb flavor and just a little heat. So that's, and it says small plants on there. So that's up my alley for just a little heat. You know, it's a little bit milder pepper. They put it in their sweet pepper section in the catalog and they have a spicy section. So um, also, another great thing about that one is it can work well in pots, so a lot of your peppers can. Um, and then we have one that's not in the catalog here. It's an early jalapeno, so it probably has, like, you know, the typical green. Um, it's looking like a healthy plant there. It's really tall. All right, and then we're going to move on to tomatoes. <laughs> I love tomatoes. All right, so... We're going to start with one that's called German Pink. It looks like a little tomato, but it will grow really fast. Um, so, let's see here. I should have just turned it this way. That would have been easier. Um, so, there's the picture of the German Pink. One of the tomatoes that originally ignited the heirloom movement in America. This variety originated in... Bavaria, it made, I'm sorry if I mispronounced stuff, like, okay, it made its U.S. debut in 1883, brought here by Michael Ott, a great-grandfather of Seed Savers Exchange, co-founder Diane Ott Wheelie. The luxuriant 
potato leaf plants give high yields of one to two pound tomatoes nearly seedless meaty fruit the prestigious low foods um usa arc of taste enthused and they said this um a full sweet flavor even floral and tender skinned this gorgeous pink fruit okay so that that's what they said and then it goes on to say this by baker creek's author um this gorgeous pink fruit is extremely versatile excellent for canning and freezing but also for slicing and juicing this one is sure to become a favorite in your garden it is a really good overall good tomato and i'm looking forward to it because if you don't know the tomatoes i love the most are like the huge tomatoes it's just it's amazing god creates these huge tomatoes like they're such tiny ones but i'm always amazed by how how big they can become like two pounds that's awesome all right and then we've got um did that was this one in here i don't think so red rosso uh sicilian tomato here i don't know i didn't pre-look this one up in there it could be in there all right and then what do we got here this is called ozark pink because we're in the ozarks and it's always fun to have something with the name ozark on it so of course i got a couple of those and then i think this one next one is in the catalog here it's called Martino's Roma. This one's a giant tomato plant. Yay! <laughs> I love the giant ones because then you can, I don't know, you know, how much people that are watching this video know, but you can propagate these. I'm going to probably cut some of these off and see if I can get even more tomato plants. That'd be awesome. Um, I've done it before and it's a lot of fun. Okay, so I'll show you guys. That Roma was in here, right down there. I like Roma tomatoes, not really as much for fresh eating, but they're really great for, um, you know, just making like, like sauces, especially. Um, it's a determinant tomato, which means um, <clears throat> it produces all its tomatoes pretty much at one time um fantastic yields of richly flavorful um plum shaped tomatoes on compact plants that require very little staking that's very um known for a determinant that's one reason people like them they're great for another reason this would be a great um deck tomato you know or or patio tomato you put it in a pot and it's not going to be all over your deck or whatever. Okay, resistant to early blight, reliable for home or market gardens. The paste type fruit weighs um, in at two to three ounces, dry fleshed and very meaty with few seeds. Great for sauces, salsas, and paste. Yeah, I was going to say salsa too because it's not super watery. Um, that's why aromas are so great um, for certain things. Um, and then we have next um burpee long keeper i don't know anything about this tomato you guys but we're gonna try it this year um and then we have this one it's a pretty big tomato too um this is called bonnie best and we will see if it's the best <laughs> okay um let's see here it's on here right oh right here and the famous old canning tomato that was selected out of Chalk's Early Jewel by one George W. w. Middleton and introduced in 1908 by Walter P. Stokes Seed House. It became one of the most respected canning varieties in America in the first half of the 20th century. Medium-sized fruit is round, red, meaty, and loaded with flavor. A good producer that makes a fine slicer too. Becoming hard to find due to modern flavorless <laughs> hybrids. Uh-oh, somebody. <laughs> oh, that's kind of amusing to me. Okay. Um, all right. Um, what are we going to do next? Um, all right. This one was really little, but I don't. It has hope because it's doing pretty good. It's got a lot of leaves. Um, 
but I wanted to really, I like purple varieties of most anything, so, because purple's one of my favorite colors. So this one's called Purple Rain. Um, like, it's like a rain as in like you're a king or a queen of a tomato. Um, that's, anyhow, um, she told me that this one would be a good one for pots. It's more of a compact, so I'm guessing... I'm not going to say because I don't know, but it's great for pots. That's what I know. Okay, and then we have Missouri Pink Love Apple here. And I don't know anything about this one either, so it'll be interesting to try. Um, and I did Ozark Pink already, but I never read about that one, or correct? So I'm going to read about that one quick. Um, and it shows a huge picture there. So I wanted to read about that one. Um, uh, it's an indeterminate, which is um, one that produces over a long amount of time. It's more one that would need staked. It's kind of all over the place, you know. Um, and by staked, I mean like it needs like a tomato cage on it or you need to tie it in some way to like a fence or cattle panel, you know, anything like that. Um, if you want to make it a little easier for collecting the tomatoes. Um, we have done some where we haven't, um, haven't staked them and they still did okay, you know. So if you don't have money for that, don't worry about it. Just keep growing. Okay, and keep going. <laughs> A darling pink tomato that is more heat and disease resistant than its pretty looks and smooth flavor let on. The pink tomato is emblematic oh man there's there's some tongue twister words in here of the agriculture history of arkansas and ozark pink is a toothsome vestige of the tomatoes heyday there um joe mcferrin who had a 50-year career in agriculture in the state of arkansas bred this variety and a number of other notable heirlooms at the university of arkansas he selected ozark pink to stand up to the bar barrage of heat humidity, and diseases known to stress tomatoes. The result, phenomenal, sweet flavor, great storage quality, and very rugged constitution. We like anything with great storage because tomatoes can go bad pretty fast, you know, with, um, you know, they just can, you know, they get a split in them and anyhow. But we are looking forward to all those tomatoes um, to try. And I have just a few more plants. Um, from the farmer's market, I got... A tarragon plant for three dollars today I thought it looked awesome <laughs> and then um, I definitely got this for one of my kids um, is very interested in this is, it's hard to tell it's so this plant is way bigger than you can see and I don't want to break it but this is um, a choke cherry or um, some people know it as an aronia berry you know so we're looking forward to growing it. I don't know if they consider it a tree or a bush. I'd have to look it up, but I've had the berries before. They're not like a blueberry taste-wise. <laughs> I love blueberries. They're not as sweet, and but they are very, very good um, for their antioxidants. And so you can put them in like smoothies and stuff if you don't want to eat them fresh. Um, and then last but not least, it's not really a food plant per se um at all um it's gonna be hard to show so i probably just show this part of it um, it looks like i'm gonna live in a jungle here <laughs> um it's a a pussy willow and um this is actually called a giant one and so i'm looking forward to it the the fuzzy heads on it are i'm trying to try to see you can kind of see right there um they could get really long like as long as my finger it sounds like so um that's pretty awesome i love willows um i love all trees and so we're slowly getting different varieties here i hope you guys enjoyed this video um let me know what your favorites are to grow um i definitely tomatoes are up there for me um so i was super excited about getting all those tomatoes i love peppers too um they're a little bit harder to seed start um so <laughs> That's why I'd probably pick tomatoes over them, not just a little, but I love peppers. I love eating peppers and making salsa and all that. Um, 
be kind and excellent to one another. And don't forget that Jesus loves you.